Um, a to me is the, like the like the blue is the pink stain, and the PAS is the purple one. But what you need to know about PAS is that it stains glycogen and carbohydrates. Guaranteed question: PAS stains glycogen and carbohydrates. Uh, just know that basic things stain blue, acidic things stain pink. Oh, just know that the basal lamina divides uh, connective tissue from epithelium. Basal lamina divides. Uh, so you need to know that exocrine glands have a connecting stock and they secrete into the lumen. Endocrine glands have no connecting stock and they secrete to the basal lamina. You guys have this slide? It's probably a bit more fun. Let's just make sure you know the difference between endocrine and exocrine. Uh, you're gonna get you're gonna get a question about identifying the type of cell, and then whether or not it's simple or stratified, kind of a... or pseudo stratified, or transitional. Okay, so you only see pseudo stratified in the respiratory system and your epididymis. Transitional epithelium is only in the bladder. Endothelium is on blood vessels. Uh, mesothelium is the cavities, anything lining ca a cavity. So your abdominal, endocardial, or oral cavities. I uh, just know that these are both simple squamous. Oh, and just know that um, mitosis starts at the basal lamina. Okay, so just know that um, carcinoma is cancer of epithelial cells, and adenocarcinoma is cancer of glands. Okay, so you need to, for metaplasia, you need to know that this is, uh, this is just a change in the type of epithelium, but this is not, uh, this is not cancer, but it could turn into cancer. So for what you need to know about metaplasia, you need to know the normal types and then the abnormal. So what we need to know what's normal and then what it changes to. I think it's just the, the smoker's lung and then there it's esophagus. I got it, Alex. Uh, just know that goblet cells secrete mucus. And if you get the question that says, um, what will accumulate in a person if he has no goblet cells, the answer is dust. Dust. Okay, so for Barrett's esophagus, um, so the normal tissue for Barrett's esophagus, or the, lab, the normal tissue for your esophagus is simple coronar, and then it is replaced with non-keratinized stratified squamous. Oh, there, and that it, metaplasia is reversible. Oh, and then for smokers lung, normal is pseudo stratified glomar that changes into simple squamous epithelium. Wait. Oh, uh, I made a mistake about there. It's, it's the opposite. So uh, the normal is non keratinized stratified squamous and it's changed to glomar. 
because the columnar epithelium has goblet cells. And then those goblet cells counteract the acid uh, being refluxed from the stomach. Any questions about that? Anyone in need of the anything? Okay. Uh, just know like the locations of the veins. Basal is on the, the basement or the basal layer. That doesn't help. Uh, lateral is on the lateral layer. Nephropole is the wound. So just know like in general where they are and then know what um what is it, the, the attachment points you find in each layer. Uh, so the basal lamina connects directly with the extracellular nutrients. Oh, just know that it's negative, negatively charged, the basal lamina. And that's made of type 4 collagen. I think this is outdated. Uh, let's see. Oh, epithelium has no blood vessels. Therefore, all the blood vessel is in the connective tissue. Did you have your connective tissue lecture yet? I'm just, I'm just gonna say it anyway. Um, whenever you see epithelium, the layer on, immediately underneath it is loose connective tissue. So for tight junctions, uh, you just need to know that they prevent water or solids from flowing through them. And the proteins are called clodins and glutins. Okay, paracellular between cells, transcellular through the cells. That's straightforward. Okay, so the zone of adherence, this again. oh, it's cadurins and actin. And that's all you need to know. Yeah, that's all you need to know. Okay, so desmosomes are cadurins and intermediate filaments. And, and just know that these are what allow the, the cells to stick together. And then hemming desmosomes is the only one on the basal layer, and it's instead of solid cell, it's cell to basement membrane. Oh, and instead of instead, oh. uh, okay, so uh, desmosomes, hemming desmosomes are the only junctions off that attach to the basal lamina. Um, is that it? Okay. I'll just know that instead of cadmium rings, it uses integrins. And then just be able to recognize what they look like in the EM picture. So tight junctions is always closer to the apical surface. Okay. And desmosomes is darker than zonula and urines. Okay. Uh, so gap junctions, just know that this is how the cells communicate with each other. Okay, that's it. And just know that it's made of connexons. Okay, so goblet cells, you need to know what they look like. They, I don't know, they look like that. But just, uh, just know that they stay, stay paler than like normal tissue, or normal epithelial tissue. Uh, just know that the cilia, microvilli, and stereocilia 
are found on the equal surface. Sure to know that the brush border has a black hole helix and it stays with PAS. Oh, and as well as the basement membrane. Basement membrane stays with PAS. So stereo cilia, you need to know that it's made of actin. Whatever. Okay, so know the type of secretion, so mericrin, apocrine, and holocrine. Uh, mericrin is your typical secreting Apocrine is your, it secretes part, parts of the apical membrane, and holocrine uh, secretes the entire cell. Serous secretes water, mucus secretes mucus. Cool. And just know that mucus is pale staining, serous is darker staining. Oh, and uh, for exocrine, did you get to this part yet? Exocrine glands. Okay. Uh, so I just need to know that the glands do the secreting, and the ducts, um, they carry the secretions and they also modify it. So the ducts modify the secretions. And I think you might have to know what, how to identify what it's like on a level section, so whether or not it's uh, tubular or has an arm. So in myoepithelial cells are epithelial cells that can contract and their um, intermediate filament is keratin. Remember that tight junctions prevent movement of solids through the cell or between the cells. Uh, for glucose uptake, um, what is this? Okay. So, to increase the absorption of salts, you give a person glucose because. Uh, it's in, it's in your second part, but just knowing that to in, like let's say like someone's vomiting and they're dehydrated and you want to rehydrate them, you give them uh, glucose and salt because um, if you give them glucose with salt, you're going to increase the absorption of sodium. Does, make, does this make sense? Because uh, it's the Sodium glucose co-transporter. Water follows water follows salts and uh, aquaporins are the only channels that allow absorption of only water. Can you just go to the first slide? The what slide? The first slide. Which slide? The first. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I forgot to say, you mentioned something. Alex, um, do you have absorption and secretion require a lot of ATP. Therefore, any cell that specializes in it has a lot of mitochondria. Oh, they're, they're found on the basement membrane. Okay. Was it about the, the stains? Is that okay? Just know that uh, 
H&E is a typical stain, and PAS stains for glycogen and carbohydrates. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay, what? Well, uh, you have the fertilizer in this lecture, we have cells and fertilization. You got it? Okay. Okay, so you have to know these weeks. Germinal is from weeks one to week two. Embryonic from week three to week eight. Make sure you know that because she in your question she'll either give you two to weeks two to eight, weeks three to nine, or three to eight. So just know three to eight for embryonic. And fetal is from nine to birth. The most sensitive period is week five. Um, let's see. I'll uh, just know that um, if she gives you the last, if she wants you to calculate the age of the fetus and she gives you the, the mother's last menstrual period, you just add two weeks. And then for trimesters, clinical trimesters, um, instead of like one, instead of these weeks, it's, um, it's just divided equally into thirds. Okay, any questions about this? Guaranteed question on this. No, no, don't worry about that. No, she, she probably cares more about the like these weird weeks. But make sure you know them. And then the plus two week rule for the menstrual cycle. Okay. Uh let's see. Please know about this. Okay. Uh so um So for meiosis, one for females, or what is it? You have a baby female, um, just know that her eggs stop in prophase one. Actually, no. Uh, the eggs are in prophase one, but yeah, the eggs are in prophase one. And then, Hold on, wait, I haven't seen this in a while. Oh, okay. Uh, so, let's start over. So when a baby is born and she's a female, her eggs are in prophase one. Uh, when she goes to puberty, she goes all the way to metaphase. Shit. I just gonna do metaphase two. Oh yeah, yeah metaphase two. When she ovulates, or when she, yeah, or which means puberty. So when she's in puberty, she goes to metaphase two, and then once she like has sex, and then the guy, oh, I shouldn't say that. The guy like you know, not in her. The the sperm gets to the egg, and then it finds a way. <laughs> Okay, so any questions? <laughs> it's just the one that ovulates. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, oh, you need to know this. Uh, so, eggs have a viability of one day, sperm has a viability of two days. Um, no, then, no, this. Just know the ampulla is the site of fertilization, and that's also the most common site for ectopic pregnancies. And make sure you know where it is. Okay, uh, so you need to know the anatomy of the sperm. Uh, just know um, the mitochondria is in the neck. Acrosome is is the arrow head thingy. And that the glycoprotein coat is the outer layer of the sperm.
Oh, and that uh, when microsperm is inside the vaginal wall, it rubs on the mucosa, and then it, it then becomes capacitated. Then the glycoprotein coat gets removed. Any, anyone you need to repeat anything? Okay. Uh, so once the egg gets to, once the sperm gets to the egg, it binds to the zone of placenta and, and it triggers the acrosome reaction. The acrosome reaction like melts the membrane and then allows the sperm to penetrate through the zone of placenta. Okay. And then once it penetrates, it triggers the cortical reaction. And then the cortical reaction prevents other sperm from penetrating it. Or it makes it impermeable. Okay. Oh, so and, uh, for the sperm, the mitochondria regenerate. And now oh, the sperm forms a male prometheus and then it completes the meiosis too. Any questions about this lecture? Okay. I think is my name. Okay, weeks one and two. Wow. Did she finish this lecture? We don't. Have So you need to know the names of the zygote in the cell stages. So let's see. I believe from cell stage one to eight, it's called compaction. Uh, let's see. Yeah, cell stages one cell to eight cell stage is compaction, and compaction is caused by the tight junctions. So the cell, so the cells individually just get smaller. Or the cytoplasm of the cells gets smaller. Sixteen cell is the mulberry or gumarola. So you need to know at day two, the zone of coincidence disappears. You need to know that implantation occurs at day seven, and it occurs at the posterior superior wall of the endometrium. Uh, the functional layer of the endometrium. Ectopic pregnancies most commonly occur at the ampulla. Uh, so for these pictures, make sure you're able to identify them. You don't need to know what stage it's at, you just need to identify each part. Okay. Okay, so the... Okay, so just know that the blue cells make the baby, yellow cells make the supportive tissue for the baby. So they make like the yolk sac, the placenta. Okay, take a picture. And then the, the gray cells function to penetrate the endometrium. And then they form the, what's the actually called placenta. And there's not that the trophoblastic lacunae are where the blood vessels are going to be. Oh, uh, weeks two, from week two. Or day 14 is when the bilanger during this forms. 
and this fibrum coagulum or the fibrum bug forms at day nine. So if she asked you what, st what stage occurs at the fibrum coagulum, it's a blastocyst. If she asked you what is a cell stage when the fibrum coagulum forms, it's a blastocyst. What day is it? Day nine. And so these cells right here, the simple squamous blue cells, they form your amniotic membrane. And they're called your amnioblast. You know that the syncytial trophoblast make HCG. Oh, I forgot to mention something. Uh, so syncytial trophoblast, they they penetrate the endometrium and they have no mitotic activity, while the cytotrophoblast they have the mitotic activity. Yeah, so syncytial trophoblast. Uh, I'm just going to double check myself, just to make sure I get it right. Yeah, syncytial trophoblast penetrate the endometrium, and they have no mitotic activity, while the cytotrophoblast have mitotic activity. That starts when the zone of blizzard is still there. So it's from day one to day two. Wait, oh, compaction? Uh, did, you, did you ask me if compaction occurs at day eight? Yeah, after, oh no, after eight, so. Yeah, it, it occurs from cell stage one to eight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But before, before it becomes a, a more Probably Blasso said so much here. I'm not, you might have to ask her. Yeah. Okay. So week three, you formed a trilinear during this. Uh, so for this picture, make sure that you're able to label it. So the primitive node, primitive pit, primitive groove, and primitive streak. Alex. This slide, you know. Just on this slide. Everything that I didn't like, <laughs> scratch out.
Okay, uh, Serena Mella. Um, there's no mesoderm in the, lum the lumbar sacral region. Um, uh, these people also have no kidneys. You need to know that the primitive screen disappears by week four, and if it doesn't disappear, you get the sacrococcygeal teratoma. Okay. Uh, you just need to know that the nodal cord induces formation of the Nodal cord induces no relation. Oh, and the nodal cord turns into the nucleus pulposus. Um. You're going to learn this in musculoskeletal, so I'm just going to skip it. I'm going to skip that too. Whatever. Okay. So, uh, cranial closure is from day 25 to 26. Uh, column closure is day 27 to 28. And you just need to know the concept that um, during development, everything above the baby uh, closes first, and everything below it will close in later. Uh, okay, so no press, just know this picture. Yeah, this picture. And be able to know what each thing forms. So that's where that whole, whole chart comes in. Okay, and uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, uh, just know that BMP4 forms your skin. No, uh, BMP4 forms anything with keratin. So your epidermis, hair, and nails. Uh, so, the pathway of neural crest cells, the dorsal pathway, forms melanocytes, and the ventral pathway forms your what is it, peripheral nervous system. Mm. And just know that odontal blasts are formed by neural crest cells. Uh, make sure you know that anencephaly, this one right here, is from a neural tube defect that's a failure for caudal closure. Uh, the oral perineal membrane forms at week, ruptures at week four, the leukal membrane ruptures at week seven. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. Any questions about the lecture? What is this lecture? Epithelium 2. Okay, so my question is going to be identify the identify the epithelium. For keratin, just know what it looks like. Alright, okay, and this is what it looks like. And just know they're made of dead epithelial cells. Or you need to know the layers of mucosa. 
and its epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. Yeah, that was it for the lecture. But the question is going to be identify the epithelium. Any questions? Was that it for the, this week? Oh, we'll send them. One more. Okay. Uh, so now what parts, the components of the fetal placenta and the maternal placenta. Fetal is chorionic plates, and maternal is the decidual basalis. And then be able to label this picture, everything on it, just label it. Uh, so primary the list is uh, primary villus one to only three, and there's it's just a core of cytotrophoblast. Secondary villus uh, has a core of mesoderm, and tertiary villus is when blood vessels appear, and it's at the end of the group. Uh, So maternal blood is closest to the syncytial trophoblast, and fetal blood is closer to the cytotrophoblast. Um, let's see, for what you need to know about this, um, uh, Placental septation forms cotyledons, and just know that the blood supply between the mom and the fetus are separate. Okay. So. Oligohydrate, hold on, before I go on, amniotic fluid is just baby miss. So if a baby can't make pee, he can't make amniotic fluid, therefore he has oligohydrovenous. And there you see renal agencies right there. So if a baby can't pee, he can't make amniotic fluid. And for now, just know that if you can't make amniotic fluid, you also can, can't make any lungs. I'll explain during the long lecture, but just keep this in mind. Okay, and then polyhydroaminos, just know for just know it's caused by when the baby pees too much, so just think of maternal diabetes. And if you don't know, people diabetics pee a lot, so that goes hand in hand. Let's see. What else is there? Okay, yeah, that's it. Any questions about this thing? If a baby can't pee, he can't make any other food. Huh? Okay, yeah. Okay, so for the umbilical cord, just no ava. Two arteries and one vein. Two arteries, one vein. Eight bucks. Oh, and umbilical arteries carry deoxygenated blood. Umbilical veins carry oxygenated blood. Umbilical arteries carry deoxygenated blood. Umbilical veins carry oxygenated blood. Do you have these pictures of the... No. No? No? Okay. Uh, what's that? That's important. Just now, um, 
IgG is the only antibody that can cross the placenta. And any hormones that cross the placenta are lipid soluble. Let's see what you need to know about this. Uh, I don't really need to know that. Okay, hold on. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. I know we don't have this picture, but just know that if the placenta is missing a cotyledon, uh, the mom's gonna die. Or the mom, what is it? You have to get the cotyledon out of her vagina, or sorry, her uterus, because because the placenta has a high amount of blood supply. Uh, the cotyledon is still a remnant of that blood supply, so if it's not removed, you're just constantly squirting out blood. So we need to take it out ASAP. Any questions? And I think that's it. Cool. Okay, any questions? Thank you.